Hello everyone, today we're going to do a full review on the HTC 5 Pro and the topics that we are gonna cover are First of all, we will let you know what our testing equipment and PC specs are so that you can compare it Then we will go over two aspects of the HTC 5 Pro Its exterior, which is its look and feel, its design, but also its microphone, cameras, comfort, so all its hardware and then we'll go over the interior which is more software based so resolution sweet spot uh, fuel to fuel etc then we will go over some of the other questions that you have asked us and at the end of the video we will tell you our final say on the HTC 5 Pro and if you want to skip through you can because we have added a table of contents with a timestamp in our description and if you rather read you can just turn on the subtitles but now let's get started because we have a lot to discuss let's start with the PC specification that we did our testing on so you can compare it with your own system Yes, and the specifications are down below. I think the most important things are our video cards, the 1070 one and the 32 RAM memory and also the i7 CPU. And I'm going to link all our specifications down below in the description as well, so you can check it out later. We will be comparing the 5 Pro with other headsets that we own, primarily with the original 5 and the deluxe audio strap. Let's continue with the design of the 5 Pro. The 5 Pro has the same kind of material as the original 5. The backside here also feels like the same material. It is kind of flexible here, but compared to the Deluxe Audio Strap, it does feel more sturdy and also less flexible. This could mean that it is also easier to break. The big difference with the original 5 is that you now get this adjustable headphones included with the headset. The headphones are detachable with a cross-shaped screwdriver. So if you are an audiophile or just dislike the over-ear headphones, you can just use your own. This headset buckle here is also replaceable. The lens distance button is here, which you can use to move the headset forward or backwards to make room for glasses. This adjustable dial works like the deluxe audio strap. Turn it to expand or shrink the strap. The nose rest here has a different cut. In my opinion, it is better than the original 5 because it allows noticeable less light in than the original 5 nose. It is also much softer. Kinda makes me want to stroke it the whole time. There is still a proximity sensor here that senses whether or not you are wearing the headset and the knob to change the interpupillary distance can be found here. The design of the 5 Pro definitely feels better ergonomically and we also think that the new color is pretty beautiful. The headphones is different now too. The cushions are a bit thicker compared to the deluxe audio strap. It is also a tiny bit softer but that's not very noticeable. Overall the Pro's headphones are slightly more comfortable. Since we are no audio files, we can't really hear any sound quality differences. The current sound quality suffices for us and both sound alike when listening to music or playing games. However, what we can tell you is that the Pro headphones now have buttons on them. You can now change the volume of the headset by pressing the buttons on the left headphone. And on the right headphone, you have a button to mute the microphone. So if you like being in social VR, this definitely improves some ease of use. Definitely when you have to burp, for example, without frightening that poor VR friend. As for the microphones, they can be found here. There is actually a dual microphone setup in this headset. This allows for active noise cancellation as well as enabling alert mode and conversation mode. The last one is handy when you want to hear your wife or boyfriend speak to you while playing VR. Yes, very loving. As for the quality of the microphone, we thought it might be easier to just show you what it sounds like. So, we have recorded a sentence with the microphones of the HTC 5 and the 5 Pro. At the end, I will also breathe in and out to check if this is picked up. And we left these voice sequences clean and unedited so that you can compare it yourself. Let's go to the first sequence. Testing original HTC 5. Press the play button and turn on the best game for virtual reality. Pleasure guaranteed. <sighs> Second sequence. Testing HTC 5 Pro. Press the play button and turn on the best game for virtual reality. Pleasure guaranteed. 
To me, the Pro sounds slightly better. It sounds less muffled than the original 5 in my opinion. But I will let you decide yourself what you think. Now, this is an interesting part of the 5 Pro 2. The front-facing cameras here, as you can see, are now also 2 instead of 1. They have been a mystery for quite some time though, but not long ago and Gadget had confirmed that it's actually a depth sensor. This means that it can see what objects are close to you so that it can warn you when you are in danger of bumping into your precious television for example. Another interesting unfeeling was that the cameras will also enable basic hand tracking without additional hardware. Right now this isn't working yet as these features will depend on what developers can make of it, so right now we cannot test it. The Pro cameras also don't have a very high resolution, but instead a low VGA resolution. I have tested this using SteamVR's Tron mode where you can see your room through the camera of the headset while wearing it and it looks like this. I compared this with both headsets and one of the questions we got was if the quality is better with this camera. I can tell you no, it isn't. The original 5 actually looks kind of brighter in Tron mode and a bit clearer. However, if I look at the normal camera view on the controller, the one of the 5 Pro looks better, but that could also be because of the higher resolution on the Pro. It seems that the purpose of the cameras is to enhance the Chaperone's safeguard feature of Steam VR. HTC is actually currently working with Valve to figure out how to do this. HTC is also actually handing out dev kits of the cameras to developers, so I guess it's just a matter of time until we know what developers will come up with for the cameras, so yeah, definitely an interesting one. All right, on to the comfort of the 5 Pro. We can tell you that the comfort of the Pro has drastically improved. When I put on the deluxe audio strap, there is much more pressure. I have to make it very tight if I want to make my image as sharp as possible and Cherry actually sometimes gets a headache from it. The Pro is designed much more comfortable. There is more weight on the back, making it more balanced. Comparing it with the PSVR, I think the PSVR is still slightly more comfortable, but the 5 Pro comes very close to it. Both headsets are less front heavy, which takes the pressure off, making it more comfortable. If I had to rank the headset in terms of comfort, I would say that the PSVR is on top. The 5 Pro comes directly after it, but it's also almost on the same spot. However, it's not number one because it still feels a bit more front heavy than the PSVR. After the Pro comes the Rift and then for me personally comes the 5 plus deluxe audio strap. The original 5 straps are in the same spot for me because of the front heaviness. The face pads here on the Pro are also thicker than the original 5 foams and there is really thick foam on the back side of the headset too and also on the sides here giving it more comfort so one of the interesting questions was how far can you expand the straps i measured this for you the dial on the back of the buckle can expand and shrink the headset from about 7 to 9.8 inch. I measured this from the top of the headset, where the top strap goes in the headset, to the front of the back foam cushion. Another interesting question was, can you use the current VR covers on the Pro? Yes, you can, since the headset is about the same size. Here we put in the thicker leather pad of VR cover that we have been using on the original 5. However, because of the new nose pads here, it feels a lot less comfortable. I hope that VR cover will design some new fitting VR covers for the Pro. For the weight, we have weighted both the original 5 with the deluxe audio strap and the 5 Pro. It looks like the weight makes almost no difference. The original 5 plus the Lux audio strap is about 1.9 pounds and the 5 Pro is about 1.8 pounds. Of course, we also have to talk about the cables. The cables that goes from the headset to the link box is the same length as the original 5, about 5 meters. The display port, USB and power cable are also about the same length as the original 5. We also promised to check where the USB-C compartment is in our first impressions video. We found it, here. There is also a handy guide that explains how to open this compartment, which we will link down below. As for the lenses, they are reported to be the same Fresno lenses as the original 5, and well, I have noticed no differences here. You can still rotate the interpupillary distance freely from about 61.2 to 74.6, 
You can try and go a bit lower or higher, but this will take effort. We do recommend really measuring your IBT for the most sharp image for all headsets, by the way. If you don't know what this is, your IPD is the distance between the centers of the pupils of the eyes. It is uh, measured in millimeters. So the question that most of you have asked is whether there is a significant difference between the 5 Pro and the original 5 in terms of resolution. I have tested this on Sprint Factor because this is a racing kind of game with objects far in the distance. I have also tried playing some shooters and turned on Skyrim to compare on both headsets. While what I have noticed here is that you can definitely see objects in the distance more clear, but it is not a huge significant difference that will change your gaming experience or give you a better advantage while playing competitive games. On the original 5, it does take me a couple of milliseconds, two seconds more to focus on an object that is far away though. On the Pro, I can focus on distant objects without any trouble. Now for text, I noticed a significant difference. To compare text, I used the big screen and virtual desktop to try and read what was on my computer. The advantage of using these apps was that I could adjust the distance of the text so that I could compare it better. In big screen, I could read the text significantly sharper when put in the distance. This was especially easy to notice when I put on the cinema environment and I was sitting in the back of the cinema looking at the big screen in front of me. On the original 5 I could not read the text in my file explorer on Windows 10. On the Pro I could easily read the text there. So this also means that watching a movie from the same position is clearer on the Pro. To me, movies looked a bit more blurry from that distance on the original 5, so I do think the Pro could enhance your movie or video watching experience in VR. I also compared just text on big screen, which I will show you now. So alright guys, to test the readable text and to see what the difference is between this 5, ah, the Pro one and also the, uh, the original 5, I'm going to test it in big screen, okay? So big screen beta, this is a, a free app that you can download as well to compare it yourself. And I have a notepad open over there as you can see. I can point at it. I wrote, is this still readable? And it's an 11 point Calibri regular font. And right now, yes, I can really read this really well. I can actually read everything on the screen super well. It's super sharp. I've actually never seen text this sharp before in my headset so that's uh that's very very cool i can also read this very easily so now let's move the screen back a little bit oh let me actually show you guys that i have my size of my monitor in about the middle here and the curvature is over here and i have the brightness all the way up so let's put the monitor a little bit back now all right so Everything is still very readable to me. Put a little bit back. All right, now it's getting a little bit more on shop. Like this text, the big ones and the titles here, I can still read perfectly, but not my 11 point Calibri regular font. I can still read it, but it's not super comfortable anymore. So I guess this is about the max of uh, how far I can make my monitor to make it readable. All right, so this is also a little bit on sharp now. Let me put a little bit back. Okay, so now I can read it a lot better now, but the perfect distance is just somewhere. I think this is the perfect distance, but to make it super clear to me, this is just the best. This is certainly the best. So you see the original 5 now and this looks readable but you can see it's a little bit blurry as well and you can, as you can see here the size is in the middle, the distance all the way to my face so let me move it a little bit back a little bit more, maybe to the middle okay totally not readable anymore, really not readable even the bigger text is blurry let me go back a little bit. Yeah, I can sort of read this, but it's really not comfortable. It's kind of blurry. 
as you can see here as well a significant difference. Using the original 5 I could never really focus enough on text for a long time without becoming tired. On the Pro it is much better and as a software developer I was looking for a headset that I could use to code in. It was kind of a dream of mine to do it in VR as I would be able to spawn really big screens in front of me and also be just very focused. I did that in virtual desktop and I could actually work for two hours straight without my eyes getting tired so I really think that's amazing. We have also been asked many times whether the sweet spot is better than the original 5. To be frank we haven't noticed much difference here. It looks like it is in the same area as the original 5. However it is easier for me to find the sweet spot with the new strap and easier for me to stay in it. On the deluxe audio strap I sometimes just could not find the sweet spot. Tian TV Dinner asked a good question about this. He asks Hey guys, my question, how is the sweet spot for image quality? I noticed my 5 versus the Rift, if I look to the size of the headset, the image quality degrades much less than my 5. The 5 appears extremely blurry in the corners, however if I'm in the sweet spot my 5 seems a bit sharper than the Rift. Is there a more usable image in the 5 Pro? Well I tried this out on the two 5s and I have to say unfortunately there is not much difference. The sides are still very blurry, but that is only when and you don't look from the sweet spot. As for the screen door effect, it is noticeably less on the 5 Pro. It is not completely gone, you can still see the screen door effect in the distance, but noticeably less and much better now. I have also compared the glare on the lenses and to me the glare is about the same on both headsets. You kind of forget about it after playing for a while, but it is definitely always visible, especially on darker backgrounds. I have never really had much trouble with god rays and the 5 Pro is the same there too. The field of view of the Pro is still 110 degrees, this is the same as the original 5 and that is definitely noticeable. I can still see the rings of the lenses when I'm in VR and I think this is definitely one thing I am disappointed about. We would love to have a next generation headset with a better field of view. So here is another question from Chris Tran. One of my biggest disappointments with all VR headsets is that the colors are really washed out and less saturated than monitors. If you ever have mirror mode on and look at the colors on your monitor and your HMD, you can really see the difference. Are the colors just as badly washed out on the 5 Pro? To answer you, the colors look the same to us. I have compared this on both headsets in Tilt Brush, since you can create many different colors and contrasts there. There isn't much difference between the headsets. The monitor screen is definitely still better looking, although this of course depends on your monitor. But I also think this is personal preference, because I don't really mind the colors in the headset when I'm playing a game. However, I can imagine that this could be a bigger problem for creatives or artists that need more realistic colors. Now let's move on to super sampling. We got many questions from you asking about this. This is why we tried super sampling the original 5 to 1.8 and also to 200% to see if we could get the same quality as the Pro. And we could see that text on the super sampled 5 is definitely more readable, but still it takes more time for our eyes to get focused on this text on this headset. To be frank, the 5 Pro is still a huge difference here for us. As for the frame drops differences, this is interesting. Since we use Skyrim to compare frame drops, we noticed that the 5 Pro has frame drops. It isn't really noticeable while playing though. But when we open SteamVR Advanced Settings, we could see frame drops on the 5 Pro while playing Skyrim. And on the original 5, there were zero frame drops. This was tested with no super sampling, by the way. So it seems like the 5 Pro definitely needs a more buffy machine. One last thing before we move on to the final say. One of the interesting parts of the 5 Pro is that it is going to be compatible to the second generation of lighthouses, controllers, and also compatibility with the new wireless unit that HTC is bringing out. This means that you will be able to play wireless VR just like with the TP Cast. What I really dislike though while using the DP cast is that I had to use an external router that limited your internet speed for it to work 
and some other, let's say, annoyances. With the HTC solution, there is no external router, but instead HTC will provide an external PCIe card. And to me, this sounds like a better solution. However, we will have to wait and see if it is. I have recently watched a video on this HTC wireless upgrade from Tested on YouTube, and they were very positive. So we are excited to see this released too. As for the lighthouses and controllers, we don't expect much difference, except that it seems like you will be able to track a bigger play space with these. So here we are, our final say on the 5 Pro. And a question a lot of you have been asking us is, do we think that the 5 Pro is worth the upgrade? I will say Kevin Smith has asked us to answer the following. If resolution was the primary reason for purchasing this headset, does that factor alone justify the costs? That is the resolution bump substantial enough to justify this upgrade as I really don't care enough for an additional mic or improved audio or comfort to go out and spend another thousand dollars on VR. Yes, very good question and we will try answering you. However, there is no clear yes or no answer because it really depends on your situation and also what you are going to do with it. But if you would recommend this headset purely based on its price versus its upgrades, then we have to say no for someone who plays VR games only occasionally. We think it is not worth it to pay $800 for the headset alone just for the current improvements, since I don't think that the resolution is that big of a difference while playing games. It is not going to significantly give you an advantage while playing competitive games for example, and we also tend to forget about the blurriness anyway while playing a game. Don't get us wrong though, because the 5 Pro is a clear overall improvement. The audio, microphone, resolution and comfort are all a noticeable improvement straight away as you put on the headset. It is amazing to be able to read text sharper and to be able to see things sharper. So we feel like this headset is a recommendation only if you play a lot of VR like we do for instance and not only use it for playing but also to work or to create in VR for example. Then this upgrade is definitely beneficial. Of course only if you don't mind spending that money. We also think you will get better worth for your money on the 5 Pro if you have a GTX 1080 video cards, since you can use better graphical settings and get the most out of the Pro. However, if you don't own a VR headset yet and are looking to buy one, then we do think the original 5 with its reduced price would be better worth for your money. So we also have a couple of questions that we haven't covered yet in this video and we want to answer them now. So I'm going to read the first question is from Slayer768. Does watching movies in VR look a lot better or 360 videos? Yes, it is better actually. Um, I've already mentioned it in the video before at the big screen test. If you watch from big screen for example, there is like this huge cinema screen in front of you and it's more far away. And because of the 5 resolution, you can see those movies a little bit more clearer from a distance. So, but it really does depend on your setup. Um, so if you watch like from a closer distance, for example, then it might not be that huge of a difference. So, yeah, I agree with that. Second question is from Single Razor. Hi, Cass and Cherry. My question comes about ironically because you are both sitting in racing seats for this video. But is the Pro better for people like me who buy VR only mainly for sim racing? Meaning, can you tell if the image shown is any wider or has any depth to the back of any image for showing distance down a racing track, for example? Well, I see that uh, JJ Mark has actually already replied on this like that the image isn't really any wider because the lens is uh, completely different. I mean, completely the same, the field of view is the same, so it's definitely not wider. It could have a little bit more depth because it's more clearer now from a distance. Yeah. But I don't think it's a significant difference for you to have a benefit for winning a race, for example. So, another question from a familiar face, C3. <laughs> he says, anything can be just kidding. <laughs> Apart from the resolution upgrade, if you could take one of the new things on the Pro and put it on an ordinary 5 or a Rift, what would that be? 
it's a hard one. Hmm, next to the resolution, maybe the comfort actually. It's really comfortable. It's really easy to adjust as well. Yeah? Yeah. I will definitely like add that to the old headsets as well. Like all the cushions around your head. It's really too comfortable. It's also really comfortable to um, wear the headset for a longer time as well. And uh, it's uh, something I definitely like. Okay, what do you think, us? Well, I already think the Rift is pretty comfortable. But yeah, I think that's from the Pro. Definitely that's... Yeah. Yeah, in comparison okay. to the old 5, the most, like... I think that's like the most difference. Yes. And then, another question from Demon Highwayman. If you don't have the original 5, would you need to go on eBay looking for lighthouses and the 5 wands, etc? I won't be upgrading for my Rift at this point, but that was the first thing I thought of when I first heard. Whoa! The iPad has just turned off because it has no more battery. <laughs> Alright, just got the Cherry's phone for the question. So, it also says, I won't be upgrading for my Rift at this point, but that was the first thing I thought of when I first heard it was just a headset included when you buy it. So yes, yeah, you definitely need the lighthouses and the 5 ones if you only buy the 5 Pro. Yeah. Send alone. But I think there's already a kit out with the controllers and also the lighthouses included. Then, another question from Wilmonader. Do you think it will be popular enough for third-party developers like TPCOS to make a wireless version? Anyway, love your work plus that cat was so cute. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Um, I, I know that the 5 Pro isn't the most popular headset right now because of the pricing, but I also know that TPCOS is actually working on a universal uh, wireless module that is going to work on all headsets. So. Yeah probably gonna work on the 5 Pro as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's actually a good one. Yeah. And then bonus question from Sayo Mancini. Are you going to review the Samsung Odyssey for comparison? Oof. If we're getting one, we definitely will. <laughs> Are we? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, if you if you're we're not sure yet. <laughs> if you, if you are we will let you know for sure, of course. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> all right. So I think those are all the questions for now. And uh, I think this is also the end of this review. So I hope you guys found it helpful in any way at all. And uh, if we have said anything that might be not uh, completely correct, then please let us know. We'll research it for you and then we'll update it through the comments or better yet, you can also tell us during Discord, come to our cozy chat on Discord, yeah. ask your questions there, we can answer you live or something. That would yeah. be awesome to have you there. It's full of VR enthusiasts like you and us, and it's just a lot of fun to chat <laughs> over there. So just come over there. <laughs> and also for the questions that we didn't answer in here, but we do have to answer for, we'll try to message those people as well with a little answer or just in the comments. So yeah. Don't think we forgot you because we haven't. <laughs> Just letting you know. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And one special thanks to our patrons and supporters for always being there for us. Thank you so much. And well, this is the end of the video. So we are Cass and Cherry and we say we are on. <laughs>